Hello again everyone. It's been a little while since I've done a fountain pen video on the channel. Uh, just I've been focusing more on art early this year, 2022. So, um, but I have still been writing with my fountain pens and I wanted to do a favorites video because it's been a while since I've done a favorites video. So these are my favorite fountain pens of 2022 so far. And you can see the hand-turned acrylic pens are still going strong. Um, my love for those is kind of a combination of how fun they are looking and uh, the nibs that I have on them. So I'm going to go ahead and get out a sheet of Tamoe River paper and we will go ahead and test these out. So I am going to zoom in a little bit. I know that some people have made comments that I should be zooming in a little bit more. Um, I did want to kind of highlight or show you the pens as well as showing you the writing, but maybe I can find a good balance there. All right, so the first one, let me get my list here so I make sure I give you the correct info about the ink and everything. So this first pen is by Signature Pen Company and this is made with uh, Primary Manipulation by Brooks. And uh, I have one other pen in this material, but this one just really checked all the boxes for me as far as the, the beautiful colors in here. I really loved that it had a lot of this magenta type color and a lot of the purple. And I also really liked this uh, sort of tealish color here. Um, just really, really loved this colorway. And um, when I got this, I was trying to figure out what nib to put on here. And uh, what did I order it with? I think I ordered it with a medium nib. And, uh, you know, it was just a regular old medium nib. So I looked through my nibs that I'd taken off of other pens and I found a uh, Yovo gold nib, which first off went really well. This is a fine nib. And then I realized that this was one of the fine nibs that I had that were tuned by Pen Realm. And I was like, well, I really wanna be able to use that. This does not post by the way, even though it, uh, it almost posts but I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't write with it that way. I'm gonna put the cap off to the side here. Um, but this is such a beautiful, just standard fine nib that it has made its way into my favorites. So this is by Signature Pen Company. And I will put this paper up closer up to the camera towards the end so that you can see in a little bit more detail as well. Uh, so this is Signature Pen Company Primary Manipulation by Brooks Blanks. And this has a fine nib tuned by Pen Realm. beautiful. And then the ink here is Diamine Yuletide. So this was in the um, Diamine Ink Vent Calendar for 2021. Uh, this is also a really comfortable uh, model. I really, really like the the way that this is made, the, the girth of the uh, section here where you hold on to it is really, the grip section is really comfortable for me. Um, that's generally also something that I take into account with hand turned pens. The ones that I find more comfortable are definitely ones that I turn to more often and this is one of those. I've really been liking the Signature Pen Company pens generally. Okay, now this one is a real beauty. This one is uh, made by Butter Knife for gourmet pens and it's called it's in a colorway called polar lights which the blank is made by a company called bbc and this has a little bit of a special nib but the nib is actually super cheap 
but I will show you when I open it up, but I just really, really love the sparkle in this pen. Um, it, it's just beautiful. I, I really like this one a lot. And then the nib I have on here is, um, what is the brand name? What does it say? It doesn't say um, on the nib. I can't, and I can't remember, but this is a really inexpensive nib called a long knife nib. So it's shaped somewhat like a, uh, an architect nib. And these can be purchased really cheaply on Etsy or eBay. Um, I got one with a little flame on it, which I thought was really kind of cool. And I think I got two of them for $20. So they're really inexpensive nibs. And they write really nicely, which is the important part, right? So this is Butter Knife Polar Lights. Four gourmet pens. They're in Canada. And with a long knife, nib. I will put a link to the nib where I got it. And then the ink is Diamine Nightshade. So that's another ink from the uh, Diamine Ink Vent calendar. So what's really kind of cool about this, you get a narrow down stroke, broader side stroke, and it also changes depending on how you hold the nib. So holding it up tall, you get a, a, a narrower stroke. You actually get a slightly narrower stroke holding it lower down. Let's see, if you hold it way, way down, you get so, so there's, there's a lot of variation there, which is really fun. I just realized that I did not do any kind of test with this, but it's just a plain uh, fine nib. I think this probably writes a little bit broad for a fine, but it's super smooth and lovely. And I actually noticed that I do not have any gold nibs here in these pens today, which is kind of interesting. All right, so this next pen is made by Bone Crusher Studio. And Bone Crusher Studio is actually, they make a pen that I find the most comfortable of any hand turned pen that I've found. It just fits my hand really, really well. The grip section is super comfortable. Uh, it's, it, it just works really, really well for my particular grip. This um, blank, is uh, called Ink Drop, and I think it's by Cocoon Blanks, and it has little sparklies and um, just some little wisps of drops of ink there. Really fun, really nice. Still going along with my demonstrator theme too, so you know we have this one which is a demonstrator and this one as well. And the nib that I have on here is a Franklin Christoph Sig nib in medium in a black coating, which they don't always have. I got this in their online pen show that they had recently. I was so proud of myself. I only got a nib and ink in their recent online pen show. I did not buy a pen. I was, uh, I've been buying fewer pens as well. So that's why I haven't really had as much new things to show off. So this pen is by Bone Crusher. Studio, which you can only, I think he only sells on uh, Instagram. And the blank is Ink Drop. And this has, with a Franklin Christoph medium sig nib. Oops, okay. Uh, that happened. Nib. Uh, I think I was trying to write in black lettering and then change to the other writing in the middle. And then the ink here is uh, Franklin Christoph Philly Pen Show Pink. So that's the ink that I ordered online, and this is the nib that I ordered online. But this is a really nice and smooth nib. It's kind of like an italic nib. 
but the uh, advantage of this is you can write at with it at any angle and you do get a little bit of difference in vari line variation um, depending on how you hold it. But beautiful pen, beautiful nib, love it. Okay, and this is one that I had been waiting for for quite some time. This is made by Woodshed Pen Company and the blank is Mermaid Tears by Brooks Blanks. And again, it's really sparkly and pretty, such a beautiful blue and a little bit of purple and teal in there. Um, and this, ha this has the nib that came with it, which is a medium nib, but it is etched with a little mermaid tail, which is really, really cute. And uh, that's why I probably will not change this. And um, it did come with its own special ink, which I don't think you can get anywhere on its own. So I apologize for that, but this is Woodshed Pen Co. Mermaid Tears. And that's another one by Brooks. And um, so the it's just with a medium nib. And then the ink in here is, uh, let's see, it's by Papier, Papier Plume. And I'm just calling this the mermaid ink because it didn't have a label. It came in this lovely little bottle here. Um, you can even see through the bottle that it kind of has, it has a little bit of a purplish tone too, which I suppose this has as well in certain lights. So that's mermaid ink because it was not labeled. And again, this is just a standard medium nib. It's very well tuned. I wonder if this was also tuned by Pen Realm, given that Pen Realm has an affiliation with Papier Plume. But I don't know for sure. Okay, so this is a pen I've shown before on the channel. This is by Little Pen Designs and the blank is Fire Opal, again by Brooks Blanks. I clearly like Brooks Blanks. Again, a little demo. This one's super bright and sparkly. I love it. Uh, I had initially put a um, Esterbrook broad nib on it and I really didn't end up liking that on it. So uh, I, I'm not a big fan of that nib. So I switched it to this uh, Broad Cursive Italic by fpnibs.com. They're located in Spain. And I really, really love this nib. I, I think the Broad Cursive Italics are kind of my favorites these days. Um, but, you know, I, I've been branching out in all kinds of different directions. I like really broad nibs and I like really fine nibs. They're, they're all wonderful. So this is Little Pen Designs. And this ink does obviously does not match the pen. That's because I just moved the ink with the nib from another pen. Fire Opal by Brooks Blanks. And this has a with a broad cursive italic from fpnibs.com. And the ink here is Ackerman. Del Splow. All right, and this one has a lot of line variation, very broad downstroke, really fine side stroke. I tend to write with it at a 45 degree angle so that that uh, variation can be brought out. All right, so this next one's kind of fun. I have not shown this one on the channel before. So you might think that this is a pilot uh, decimo or, um, oh, what's, what's the regular name for these? Anyway, I've forgotten. Uh, vanishing point. There we go. The regular size, which is what this size would be. But instead, this is a copy by Moon Man. This is their A1 model. And the nib is a steel nib on here. Um, but it actually writes quite well. And I've actually put this pen in my everyday carry bullet journal slash calendar. Uh, just because it's a little less expensive than the Vanishing Point, I was using the Vanishing Point as my everyday carry fountain pen. 
uh, in a fine nib. This supposedly has an extra fine nib on it, but I, I don't find it super fine. Um, I did try to fit a vanishing point nib unit in here and it kept getting stuck. So I would open it because this is a, uh, a capless. So I, I would open it and then I would not be able to close it to, to click it to close like this. It would get stuck in there. Um, I did, let's see, which one? Did I, I forget which nib I tried to put in here, but in any case, it didn't work. So um, I know some people have gotten that to work. I don't know if it's the particular nib I was dealing with um, or what, but, but it seems to be the same size. You would think it would fit, but it did not let me close it. But with its original nib, I left the original nib in there and it actually writes quite well. I've been pretty impressed with it. So this is a Moon Man. A1 with an extra fine nib and oops there goes my pens rolling across the table uh, and this ink is Robert Oster hot pink and I think I mean, I may be crazy, but I see a little bit of line variation between down and side, but I don't know. Um, but this is a steel nib, and this is essentially a direct copy of the Pilot Vanishing Point. Uh, there's only a few differences I've really noticed about it. Uh, obviously, the steel nib and this little band here looks different, and then it's branded Moon Man. The interior mechanism is pretty much the same. Um, I'm not going to open it right now, but I think it's a pretty solid pen for the price. Uh, and you get that really fun capless thing. The pen, the nib has not dried out. So the capless mechanism in here where it has a little window that closes and opens seems to work well because my nib has not dried out. And it's a great, cheaper, everyday carry um, because I really do like the ease of being able to get my nib out pretty easy to put stuff in my calendar. All right, only a couple left here. So this next one is the, um, the Pen BBS Mini Food Day pen. So it's so funny. So this, this body of this is a little small, but I really, really love the nib. It's so funny. I bought all the really fancy calligraphy nibs and then the nib I liked the most is this like $15 pen <laughs> with this little tiny food A, which is basically just an upturned end. I think it was also called like a marshmallow pen or something. I'll see if I can find it and put the link down below. This one is pretty small. I do kind of wish it was a little bit bigger, the pen itself. This is a smaller nib, so this nib would be essentially the equivalent of a size 5 as opposed to a size 6, but it writes really well and I, I, I really like using it. Pen BBS Mini Food A. Oops. Mini <laughs> Food A. And the ink here is Diamine Raspberry Rose, which is another of the uh, ink vent calendars. So if I'm really lifting up that nib, it writes thinner, put it lower, it has more variation, really low. Yeah, so you get, you get a lot of you get a lot of variation here in this little nib and it writes really well. It's really smooth. Um, definitely a bargain for $15. Uh, obviously you're going to be paying shipping because this is direct from China, but, um, but it's certainly a great bargain. I dropper filled it. So it, it's got this whole thing full of ink and it hasn't leaked at all. Um, it's, it's just been a really, really useful pen. If you want just sort of a beater pen, this is, this is your one. Okay. And now I saved sort of the fanciest for last. I suppose it's called fancy. Uh, so this is a Kaweco Hello Kitty model. So it comes in this really nice sort of frosted pink color. 
Uh, I purchased the last one that was available on Amazon at the time. It is a little bit more expensive than your average Kaweco because it's a special edition. And I don't think, um, this is from 2020, I believe. Yeah, because they talk about 76 and 20 from Sanrio Company, which is the company that um, has Hello Kitty. Uh, I, I've been a fan of Hello Kitty. <laughs> However, you know, um, I, I really like the pink color. That's really the main reason why I got it. And it's a special edition with a Yovo nib instead of a Bach nib. And it does have a little Hello Kitty down below there. You've got the face of Hello Kitty and a little bow tie or a little um, hair bow. There. So that's kind of nice. This only came in fine, uh, at least at the time I got it. Um, but it writes really, really well. It's tuned very well. So this is the Kaweco Hello Kitty Limited Edition with a fine nib. And the ink in here is Pilot Hiroshizuku. Yamabudo. And what's kind of interesting here is you can see Hot Pink by Robert Oster, Diamine, Raspberry Rose, and Yamabudo all together, which they're, they have a very similar, and Philly Pencho Pink is probably also a little similar. Clearly I have a lot of pinks loaded up. Um, but you can see the differences. And I'll, again, I'll put this up close to the camera so you can see it a little better. Again, this is just a standard fine nib, but it is made by Yovo for this knit, for this pen, which I believe, I don't know if they're doing that now, but um, it was certainly <laughs> a special thing back in 2020 because they were making their nibs with Bach as far as I know. So there we go. It's obviously got this little Kaweco times Hello Kitty with a little bow. Here it came with the gold clip. Um, and that's it. <laughs> it didn't come with a converter, which I have in here now. Um, it was kind of a splurge. I actually got it with my um, Amazon points. Uh, I have not I have an Amazon credit card and I, I got it with the points I had earned on the credit card. So definitely a splurge, definitely something that's, that wasn't necessary to get, although it does fill out my, um, the side of my pen case with all of my all sports, which is what this is. It's a metal sport. It's not, it's not plastic. Okay, so here's all those pens again. And I'm going to show you the writing closer up. So I've got a lot of just sort of standard nibs. Um, it, it is kind of funny how if you, I've been writing with a bunch of different nibs lately, you know, more, more specialized nibs. And once you go back to a really, really nice, nicely tuned, fine or medium, it's, it writes really, really well. And then I was like, oh, I kind of like writing with just a regular nib still. So that's good to know as well. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see these together. All right, so those are my favorites for early 2022. And uh, we'll see how long it takes me to do another favorites video. Like I said, I, I'm sorry about slowing down a little bit on the fountain pen content, but I just have not been focusing on them as much. And I've been trying to cut down my purchases of fountain pens a little bit just because I have so many and how many really does one person need? Um, but I do have a very nice collection now of hand-turned acrylic pens, which uh, at some point I may show my collection. I now have them housed in uh, Galen Leathers uh, wooden pen storage cases that they started carrying. Um, their first batches were a little bit shorter, like they didn't hold thicker pens, but the, the latest ones are a little bit um, tall, I guess taller, the cases are taller, so they hold more, more pens. But if you're interested in seeing that collection, I'm happy to show that in a different video. Uh, it is voluminous, so I probably would not do ink testing or, or nib testing at the same time, but just let me know if you're interested and I'll line that up in the queue for videos. All right, well, take care, everyone. Feel free to subscribe to my channel to keep track of future videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.